um, we are turning to our last uh, 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 guest of the evening. It is Ryan Coonerty. Ryan, are you uh, are you there? I am here. You're um, here. Thank, all right. Thank you, he Wallace. Is, uh, he is the uh, third district county supervisor, longtime city councilman, ex mayor of Santa Cruz. Um, you know, Ryan, I, I could talk to you about any part of this year. I could talk to you about the social justice piece of it. I could talk to you about COVID, the economic part of it. But I wanna to talk to you about the fires uh, because you were a central player in us in Santa Cruz dealing with what might've been one of the most traumatic episodes in the history of this city, certainly. Um, you've been in local government for many years you grew up in Santa Cruz. You were, as a teenager, you were witness to the drama that your parents, Neil and Candy, as the owners of Bookshop Santa Cruz, went through with the book with, with the uh, with with the earthquake. And just give me a sense of where you think these fires in August rank in what you've had to deal with as a leader in in uh, Santa Cruz. Sure. Well, first, let me just say thank you for including me with an extraordinary group of leaders working at all across across our county and the way that everyone talked about how collaboration and resilience um, will be essential going forward um, and energy and some optimism. Um, I, I'm just I'm inspired and I'm grateful to be even uh, part of this conversation. Uh, yeah, this was um, this was the biggest disaster that's happened in Santa Cruz. Um, luckily, it wasn't the biggest loss of life. Um, but, uh, you know, at one point to have 70,000 people uh, evacuated um, in the midst of a pandemic, um, to have more than 900 people lose their homes, um, and uh, to just then so many of us, even if we didn't lose our homes, uh, we're either evacuated or we're living in smoke and fear. Um, it was a it was a scary time. Um, was, and I was just realizing it's four months ago today uh, that the fire, uh, the winds began in earnest, and the Waddell and Warren Ella fires combined to create this massive fire um, on the north coast and into and into San Lorenzo Valley. I want to set the stage a little bit. Um... You dealt with a personal tragedy this summer with the death of one of your staffers and a longtime friend, Allison. Um, sorry, Endhart, is that right? Eckhart? Uh, Ender, yeah. Ender, yeah. And um, she was taken in a hit and uh, was it a hit and run accident? I think she was a pedestrian, and that happened in June, if I have that right. Um, Correct. So you had heavy hearts already when this occurred some weeks later. Um, set the scene for me a little bit. Um, yeah, so I mean, um, like everyone, this has been a, a hard, miserable year. Uh, we had the uh, COVID hit in March and trying to respond to that. Um, my sister and my wife own small businesses. Um, and so trying to deal with that, I have two elementary school kids um, trying to deal with that and uh, the economic crisis that followed. And then, um, and then, and obviously then being moved by the racial justice issues um, uh, and the, the real, the murders that were happening in our country and trying to respond to that. And then, um, yeah, each supervisor has two staff members. Uh, so it's a small office to respond to uh, all the policy and constituent concerns. And Allison had been my friend uh, since she was in college at UCSC and uh, mother to two young girls and uh, was struck crossing the street on her way back to a, a Zoom meeting that we were about to have uh, with a different community group and died. And so we were sort of, uh, Rachel Dan is my other aide and I, who's right, Allison was her best friend um, and coworker for more than uh, 12 years, had planned to sort of like, let's just, the two of us hunker down, let's focus on COVID, let's help the community and let's try to keep uh, keep things quiet. And then obviously in August, you had these two small, we saw the lightning strikes and everyone was, as a native Santa Cruzans, I thought this is this is strange and 
kind of cool. Uh, I went down to the cliffs in the middle of the night, like everybody else, to check it out. Um, and then the fire struck and the wind struck and it became apparent that this was a massive, massive um, challenge and was gonna dominate uh, not only this year, but probably the next two years of my, my term on the Board of Supervisors as we try to help people re recover and rebuild and then build back better um, for the new, new reality we're in. Let's underline that um, Bonnie Dune is in your district, right? Yes, it is. And uh, a lot of the area near Davenport. Um, the last chance in the Swanton community, which were absolutely devastated. And then, yeah, uh, Bonnie Dune and uh, most of my district, then, then my district runs into the city of Santa Cruz. Right, right. So <laughs> this is a silly question, I know, but you must not have gotten much sleep this, that, that first week or so, I mean, what was that like? Were you up all night at the kitchen table, kind of just? Yeah, kind of yeah that first what was happening. That first Monday night, it was sort of I was getting updates. And, oh, there's a fire, and you know we're going to let the Waddell fire burn out, and there's a little fire in Warnella, and we're monitoring it. We're going to, you know, make sure we protect uh, homes. And um, then the winds kicked up, and um, yeah, I spent the entire night sitting at my kitchen table trying to respond to people on Facebook, trying to get them information about when to evacuate. I was happy, um, as Bella mentioned, you know, social media is uh, <laughs> in many ways making our lives worse. Um, but in this, there were specific groups for each one of these communities. And so we were able to get evacuation orders out a half hour before they otherwise would have gone out through these groups and people were going out and checking on their neighbors. But then once you told people to go, um, they needed somewhere to go. They needed somewhere to bring their animals. They needed somewhere um, to uh, to get you know food and water. Um, they needed they needed to get information, and so just spent all night and then almost essentially uh, 16, 17 hours a day online, just trying to respond to everyone's concerns and get people the information they need um, and connect them. And I will give big credit to to county staff who stood up shelters for all these people in the midst of a pandemic and animals um, and got and the small businesses that even though they were hurting donated food uh, and other essentials and uh, the community came together to help people um, as they are, still are. Uh, the community of Watsonville stepped forward and said, what do you need? And um, you know, came up with a fairgrounds. We had, a, we had hundreds and hundreds of animals there uh, and uh, it was really a countywide effort. That's got to be fulfilling when you find a connection and you can make somebody, you know, you, you can find a safe harbor for their animals or, or a place that they could go. What you were doing essentially was a logistics exercise um, against a, a ticking clock, essentially. Um, <laughs> I mean, it must have been felt, it must have uh, felt like you were moving mountains. Yeah, or um, uh, I guess trying to communicate across mountains because uh, you had, you know, you had a whole different situation going on in San Lorenzo Valley. We had uh, initially like a thousand and two thousand and three thousand firefighters here. We're trying to call in federal resources. We're trying to call in state resources. There were more than 400 fires around the state. So um, at some point it became a matter of who could scream the loudest. To get uh, to get more firefighters, um, trying to coordinate with UCSC, the residents of the city of Santa Cruz, who were starting to wonder, you know, the fire was getting closer and closer. Um, and again, all in the context of a pandemic where we couldn't normally the normal way we'd work is we just open up the the Civic or the Kaiser uh, Permanente Center and just let people stream in. But you can't do that in a pandemic, right? You have to have people six feet apart and distanced. Um, and so uh, it was a whole different scale of operation. Imagine, I imagine if you and I were, uh, were talking in the summer of 2019 and I said, Ryan, this is what you're going to face in 2020. You're going to go, no, get out of here. Forget that. That's well, I mean, I, I think you must. I was yeah, I was listening to Bonnie talk and I was like, you know, if you came and told me that like we had to close five businesses for a month. Uh, and you told me in 2019, I would have been like, nope, sorry, that's impossible, 
right? Uh, and if you told me we had to evacuate 10,000 people, I would have told you that was impossible. Um, so there is, I mean, there are lessons to be learned and inspiration to be had at our ability to meet the moment and our ability to care about each other um, as at our ability to even in the most difficult times to come together and sacrifice a little bit so that, um, so that we can make sure we're all safe um, and you know Bella and Bonnie and Ruby's work um, is are perfect examples of uh, of those kinds of efforts and the difference that can make. You mentioned it earlier um, but I need to underscore it here at the same time these catastrophic fires were happening there were similar fires all over the state of California so we couldn't stand up and go well, you know we're special uh, unlike the earthquake in which the epicenter was here and the entire country's uh, attention was on Santa Cruz. You didn't even have that advantage. Yeah, that's been the real challenge is, you know, after the earthquake, it was a localized disaster. So FEMA and the Red Cross and all those resources are sort of pumped in directly. Um, and uh, in this context, COVID is obviously a global uh, problem and the resources are spread globally. Um, we also have a failed federal government uh, and an administration, which doesn't help uh, with leadership. But then um, even with the state fires, yeah, there was full, more than 400 fires and I would call the California Director of Emergency Operations and scream that we need, we need more firefighters. And he'd say, yeah. What are you again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, you know, everyone needs more firefighters. Uh, you know, um, and uh, I got, I got 400 fires and I can only, I only have so many firefighters, but I will say there's been a couple, I mean, there were a couple standout, uh, Anna Eshoo, uh leveraged uh, some National Guard uh, firefighters uh, to come in. The, because we have the Ch Chitoni Coast Aries National Monument on the North Coast, uh, we brought in the Bureau of Land Management firefighters, a hotshot crew uh, from the Central Valley uh, who were there and they're actually there, it's a crew of veterans uh, from uh, the military who come back and get involved in this hotshot crew as both job training and therapy and everything else. Um, and they basically saved this, the town of Davenport um, uh, by going out in the poison oak and cutting lines and uh, fighting fires by hand. And so uh, there's been extraordinary people um, who uh, you know? Who 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 made a big difference? The firefighter uh, commander that I first toured uh, Bonnie Dune with, um, he uh, he lost his house in the fire up near Roseville while he was down here fighting this fire. Um, so it was um, it was a very very difficult time. And while it's hard to sit at your kitchen table for sixteen hours and do this kind of work, you still have to keep in mind the people who are out there in the field doing something 10 times more difficult. <laughs> yeah, and the and the, the disaster service workers who are staffing uh, homeless shelters and handing out food and, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the restaurants that donated made food and brought it into the shelters. Um, it was it was extraordinary The people 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 rolled up their sleeves and went to work. And again, in the midst of a pandemic where it's not, um, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to stay at home, uh, but people, people made the choice to get out and help the community. Well, it would be nice if, if, if we could say, well, that'll never happen again, but we can't say that, of course. Um, when you think about 2021 and beyond, is there anything that we can take out of what happened in 2020 and hold it up as good news. Maybe we figured some things out we didn't know before. Maybe we developed a process or, or two that, 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 will, that will help next time. Anything along those lines? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot. I mean, um, you know, a tangible thing is we have this uh, crew here, uh, contractors who are doing the rebuild permits for people who lost their homes. They think they can uh, approve a permit in two weeks um, so I've told county staff, if they can do it in two weeks, and we usually take two years, let's, let's see what we can learn and try to do it in two months. Um, and, um, but I mean, it's really about what everyone on the panel has talked about tonight, which is um, we, we needed to adapt. Uh, we needed to uh, help each other. There, there's a recognition that we, 
We can't just sort of make sure we're okay and not worry about our farm workers, not worry about the, the BIPOC community, not worry about our small businesses. We're all intertwined and we can't be successful unless we're all successful. Um, and so, and then also, frankly, having the optimism, it takes optimism for people to show up to march or to bring food or to support a small business. And so to the extent that um, they can be out, uh, that people still believed enough and loved enough, loved each other enough and love this community enough to, to help each other is what we built on uh, in 2021 as we, as we rebuild, but more importantly, sort of build in resilience because this is not, we got more crises to come uh, and we need to, uh, we need to build our systems and our communities in ways that they can, they can absorb the shocks um, and maybe even find ways um, to benefit from those disruptions uh, for the betterment of, of everyone. Ryan Coonerty, third district supervisor, here's wishing you a very boring year in 2021. How's that sound? <laughs> exactly. I can't. I'm, I'm, I would, nothing would make me happier than a nice boring year. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Ryan. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Wallace.